Next area that we're going to be covering are x-rays. Um, in this particular section we're going to assume that x-rays have already been taken and we're going to do a number of things with them. So um, we're going to start with AJ's chart and the x-rays are drawn based upon whose tooth chart is actually open. So we're going to select AJ, we're going to select the tooth chart and then the tooth chart will then come up down here in the lower right side, you should always see this little icon named Name Grabber or NG. Um, we're going to click that. It's going to invoke the um, uh, Name Grabber software. In this case, we are interested in seeing um, AJ's x rays, which I'm selecting here. If there's some possible confusion that the computer has based upon the person you're trying to select, um, in that case, it might ask you specifically, so you have to, you might have to verify via um, a birthday. But when you have the right person, you hit open patient, and what will happen is the software will come up and demonstrate all x-rays. Oh, it's asking it again. That happens sometimes. So selecting AJ Culp, and then open the selected patient, and this is the screen. So initially, it's asking for uh, which images you want to um, open. The x-rays that, uh, that are taken, intraoral x-rays, bite wings, periapicals, that kind of stuff, are always in this section. The miscellaneous section is um, always panoramic or are always panoramic x-rays. And then uh, digital images um, are intraoral photographs or um, intraoral camera images that are taken that are provided um, by the hygienist for Dr. Culp to have additional information for JRCs for example. So wherever there's subject matter the um, areas are dark. Wherever it's grayed out there are no bits of information there at all. So um, in this case we're going to go back to the x-rays and we have um, a number of different interesting views here. Um, you can select down any uh, any image you'd like and let's say for instance we're gonna we're gonna select this bite wing right here so you can either double click on it or once it's highlighted you can hit done or say for example you want to uh, select multiple images you can select those images any any way you want to you can see how they say highlighted without using the control button and then when you hit done they're gonna bring up all the different windows so let's move this one over here and let's start with uh, this guy here. I'm gonna uh, go ahead and leave the cursor on the maximize screen, hit maximize, and this is an image of, um, I think it's an image of an x-ray of a mouse that we took just for kicks. Um, you can do a number of different things with this. Um, you can right mouse click, and uh, there are filters that you can use. Typically the no real-time filter that is what's selected. Apteryx General Enhancement Filter. It goes through and you can see how the image got a bit more grainy. Um, if you go back and switch from Apteryx General Enhancement Filter to No Filter, you see it gets, uh, again, kind of fuzzy. And um, it just depends. Dr. Culp will determine which setting is appropriate for each image. Right mouse clicking again, you also have um, image operations. Um, it can uh, you can do some flipping um, if you need to. Sometimes the images are not acquired exactly the way they should be, and as a result, um, you might have to manipulate the image. So the other thing in this particular case I'm going to do is uh, delete this image. So this is a singular image <clears throat> right here. It's not a, a grouping or a series of images. So in this case, I just want to get rid of this image. I'm going to right mouse click and then delete current patient image. Um, are you sure you want to delete this? Yes. And then, of course, if you do delete it, it will not be coming back. Um, so it can ask you one more time. So um, just demonstrating this, probably Dr. Culp will be the one to delete the images, but um, we just don't want to accidentally delete a series of images by accident, of course. So, But in this case, we're going to delete it, and it's now gone. Um, Let's go to this image right here, which is a bite wing on the right hand side. And when I open it up, you can see it's it's not really that fantastically diagnostic. It's very grainy, it's very light. So we can do a couple of different things. Let's right mouse click on it and 
uh, indicate right, it looks like there's no filter, so we're going to try the Apteryx filtration. Ooh, very grainy, not very diagnostic at all, so let's go ahead and remove that. And we're going to do an enhancement, brightness, contrast, and then we're going to equalize it and see what that looks like. That's still pretty crummy. Not a great x-ray to be um, manipulating. Generally speaking, there's not a whole lot in this particular issue you need to worry about, but I just thought I'd show you the different opportunities there. Um, if you do something and you don't like the results, you can just hit the undo button and it'll take it back to where it was before. Let's make this a little smaller. And this is appropriate as it relates to um, manipulation of an image. Let's close this. And this is the upper anterior front teeth. And they, they typically are not presented in this way. They're typically, uh, this image would need to be rotated 90 degrees in a clockwise rotation. So we could do that very easily by right mouse clicking, selecting image operations, and going down and rotate image 90 degrees clockwise. And when we do that, this is the appropriate view. Um, it's important to have that, in that uh, oriented in that fashion because it just makes it that much easier to, to take a look at um, instead of having um, additional time necessary at the chair for Dr. Culp to do it. So, so and also, say for instance, um, we need, well, we're going to close this first of all, and we're going to save it. Um, if we want additional images to be brought up, we go over here to the tooth button. And when the icon changes from a regular cursor to this cursor, you hit select. The dark teeth all the way around indicate that there's images of teeth entirely all the way through. You select the center because you want all of the different images. And in this case, we're going to take a panoramic x-ray. Again, double clicking, we'll open it up. And this panoramic x-ray we would like to send to Dr. Edmonds for um, evaluation of extraction of these wisdom teeth. So what we do is we go up here. Once this image is selected, we know it's selected because this bar is a dark blue. We go up to File, Auto Export, and there is uh, Dr. Edmonds. Awatuki Oral Surgery is his section. We have what's called a Dropbox set up for him where when we select this um, option, this image, when I click the mouse, the left mouse key, is is typically, I know this is an error message here, but is, is sent instantly to a Dropbox that we share. Um, this function will not work on a remote connection that we have with, with Dentrix. And again, when you see this bar at the top, it's not possible to do that. So there, there are some uh, limitations with it. But when you are in Awatuki and you're on the hygiene side, it's very, very simple to do that in exactly that same way. Say, for instance, this patient needs to be seen by Dr. Daniluk. We have also, again, highlighted the, the top screen here, file, uh, uh, auto export, and then we have him as um, two setups with Dr. Daniluk. We have new patients that we're referring, and if we take an image that he's requested, we can simply uh, indicate that as existing patients. So in this case, he, uh, AJ is going to be a new patient, and again, ignore that window. But as quickly as that happened, this image is whisked away to their Dropbox and is synced literally within 10 seconds, and they have it, and it's done. So um, good information there, very helpful, um, very, very useful stuff.